Okay. So just like in the last lecture, we have uh, dA over dt equal to a constant times a. Here we have d vector a and b <coughs> dt is equal to a constant matrix times the same vector. All right. And uh, for that type of uh, equations, uh, the solution is also exponential. But the exponents are not just the simple numbers. What are the exponents? Yes, the exponents are the eigenvalues of this matrix. All right, what is the eigenvalue of the matrix? Well, eigenvalue is a linear operator which means the eigenvalue of a constant multiplied by a matrix is equal to that constant multiplied by the eigenvalue of the matrix. So the eigenvalues is just the eigenvalue of 2 pi k, uh, just, just 2 pi k times the eigenvalues of the matrix 0, 0, 1, minus 1, right? And uh, if you don't know the eigenvalue of that matrix is, you can go to MATLAB and the type uh, eig of 0, 1, minus 1, 0. You get plus i and minus i. All right. So which means the solution of this is going to be e to the plus minus i times uh, 2 pi k. So that's the eigenvalues of this matrix times t. And what is that? <laughs> Just the harmonic oscillations, right? It's uh, uh, with a frequency of 2 pi k. Okay, so, so that means, how, how does that mean uh, to the solution? Again, like, let's go back and substitute our analysis into this equation. We know a and b, they both behave like harmonic oscillators and the frequency at which they oscillate is proportional to k okay so that means if you have a, a sine wave let's say you have a sine wave of k equal to let's say this is 2 pi uh, what is k for that wave well, sorry. Uh, let's let's make uh, it one over here because I already have two pi. So so what is uh, what is the corresponding k for that function? It's equal to one, right? And uh, for k equal to one, how long does it take for that component to complete a period? It takes. Uh, yeah so so in, in this uh hmm? oh i think i missed the u somewhere yeah thank you thank you for that uh so that's right i think i missed the u here uh when we do the matching we have to have a u here and the u here right so uh a is equal to we have a u here we have a u here we have a u here and we have a u inside here. So here we also have a u here and u here. The eigenvalues are 2 pi k u times the eigenvalue of that. So we have a u here. Thank you. Thank you. So, so okay. So now uh, if k is equal to 1, if you look at this function, or let me just uh, write it as a cosine of uh, 2 pi k u t uh, plus or minus i times sine of 2 pi k u t, right? So this is the same thing. Uh, what what's the period? What's the period in time of this function? It's one over k u, right? The period is one over k u, right? Because when uh, when t is equal to one over k u, we have cosine of two pi, right? Okay, so that means for k equal to one, I have a period of one over u. It takes 1 over u for this function to recover itself. What happens is that this function is going to advance towards the right at a speed of u, right? So when uh, t is equal to 1 over u, 
we have completed one period through space, and we have shifted back to its original location. Okay, so when k is equal to two, for example, if I have a wave like that, the period is actually half as long, and that also makes sense because as I shift towards the right, it takes half that much time to go half the entire domain, and that function only needs to go through half of the domain for it to match itself. Similar things happen for k equal to 3, right? It requires only a third of the time for the function to shift towards the right so that it matches itself. So that's what happens uh, for Fourier analysis to uh, this equation. And uh, it's almost a trivial uh, for this uh, analytical solution. And when we go to a numerical solution, we are going to look later, it's not as trivial anymore. We are going to see that the numerical scheme is actually going to distort some of these uh, Fourier components. And it's obvious numerical schemes have to distort the Fourier components because uh, uh, in any numerical schemes, we have to represent this function on a computer. When we represent this function on a computer, we have to choose a bunch of discrete points. When we choose a set of discrete points, we can no longer represent some of the extremely high frequencies. Right, so when, when we have, a, for example, a thousand points, we cannot represent the functions with k equal to a million very accurately. So we have to miss a lot of the Fourier components and misrepresent many of the components. And uh, the analysis of numerical schemes uh, has a lot to do with analyzing how the numerical scheme is going to distort the components. It is not able to represent accurately. And uh, what's the consequences of these distortions? OK, so, so remember how we are doing the analysis over here for the analytical PDE. And we'll look later into how the analysis is going to carry it out for numerical schemes and how uh, what's the difference.